Hi, everybody. Welcome back and welcome if you're new. My name is Michelle, and if this is your first time here, what I do on this channel is I take a cookbook off of my cookbook shelf, I pick a recipe, I talk about the cookbook, and I do a review, basically. And if there's things that I change, I let you know that at the end after you get to see the recipe being made. So today's cookbook is Betty Crocker Best 100, and it was copyrighted in 2021 by General Mills. The recipe that we're going to make today is on page 220, and it's called Silver White Cake. And there's two variations there. There's cookies and cream, and then there's marble. And there's also a variation where you can use a chocolate frosting instead of the white one. We went with the white one. I picked this recipe out a couple months ago. I wanted to make it for my daughter's birthday. And I felt like it was taking a little bit of a chance because I'd never made it before. And she came over early. Her birthday's in a few days. And she loved it. We all loved it. We thought it was absolutely fantastic. So we thought we would make another one for ourselves. So we're bringing you along for the ride. This recipe first appeared in 1950 in a book, Big Red. I'm guessing that must have been the name of their cookbook. And it says it continues to be a favorite, which I can see easily. So without further ado, let's get at the recipe today. Okay, so we're gonna jump right into this cake. Now this cake recipe is very simple. Not a lot of steps. In the book that Michelle has showed you, it says at the top of the page that this very recipe appeared in their 1950s version of their first cookbook called Big Red. We don't have that book, but that being said, it means that this recipe is virtually, well, it's unchanged for at least 70 years. And obviously it came before that. But any, at any rate, we're just gonna get right into it and make it here, it's very simple. I have my oven preheating right now to 350 degrees. You will probably hear that before too long beeping. So in this bowl, I have two and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. Obviously, you can use cake flour. It says that. Here in this bowl is one and two-thirds cups of granulated sugar. And in this bowl, I have a teaspoon of salt and three and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So, I'm gonna kind of whisk these together a little bit. Probably not really completely necessary, but we're gonna do it just the same. Then we have two thirds of a cup of shortening. Short. I have one and a quarter cups of milk and a teaspoon of vanilla. Now it says add all of these to your bowl and with an electric mixer mix on like a low speed for 30 seconds. Then it says to add five egg yolks or about two thirds of a cup. Last time I made it, I measured these. I took the five yolks, dumped them into a measuring cup and it was two thirds. So I'm not gonna bother. I'm just gonna dump them right in. And mix again for another couple of minutes on medium. So I have here some crushed up Oreo cookies. It's a cup, roughly, I mean, and I discovered that two Oreo cookies equals about a quarter cup. So this is eight Oreo cookies. And then, you're just going to fold them in. Okay. 
we've opted to use our bunt pan for several reasons because we like to use our bunt pan is the main reason so If you could smell this. Not that it matters, but I'm going to turn that a little bit. Maybe it makes me feel better. And the last one I made, I ended up baking. There it is. So, we'll babysit it, and I will show you what it looks like when it comes out. Okay, this is the cake just out of the oven. It's kind of a golden brown color there, but it's perfectly well baked. It actually took 46 minutes, I believe. Yeah, it was 46 minutes when I took it out. So, toothpick is coming out clean. I'm going to let it cool in this pan for about 10 minutes. Then I'll flop it out on a cooling rack. Right now, I'm going to make the frosting. But before I do that, let me say, yes, I said I used five egg yolks. I used five egg whites. I'm sure Michelle has corrected that. Anyway, just uh, old age. Okay, my cake is out of the oven cooling. Now I'm gonna make the frosting. So in this bowl, we have three cups of icing sugar. To that, we are going to add half a cup. We're using margarine. Recipe calls for butter, but we're gonna use the margarine. In this, I have one and a half teaspoons of vanilla one to two tablespoons of milk. I'm gonna start out with one. The last one I made, I used one and a half, about. We will see. So, obviously, you don't want the sugar explosion, so go careful. As you can see, will require more milk. You can tell that right now. Maybe a smidge less than a tablespoon, but it doesn't take much. Just a tiny bit looser, and you'll see why. Just, oh, it takes such a small amount. Now, in this measuring cup, I have pretty much pulverized two Oreo cookies. That's why I made the frosting a little bit looser. Last time we didn't do this step, we just broke them into chunks and stuck them on the cake. But we thought this would be tastier. there we have it. So we'll bring you back when we put this on the cake and maybe even give it a try. So stay tuned. Okay, so we're ready to frost the cake. There it is. Looks looks great. It's, it's a lovely cake. 
Um, I don't have a carousel or whatever you would call it to uh, frost this, but I can spin it easy enough. So here is my frosting. I'm going to try to keep her all in frame here and try to keep it so you can see what I'm doing. I'm not a super wizard when it comes to frosting, but Looking to get the whole thing covered and then we'll start building if we have enough. Of course I forgot that necessarily want to dump them all over the floor. Frosting. Cookies on the frosting. Cookies on the cupboard. So there. That's it. We'll uh, cut it at some point here and show you what it looks like on the inside. So stay tuned. The moment of truth. We're gonna try this cake. That's so good. Uh, yes. Oh my goodness. Is this your new favorite cake? Take some. I tried just a it's little. It's so good. It's dense because it's like a scratch cake. Is that or is that not better than the one we made for Galen? I don't know. I just know it's delicious. That is crazy good. It would be good with ice cream. A little Oreo ice cream would be be over Oreo overload. Definitely make it again and again and again and again. Mm -hmm. That is insanely good. Yeah. Okay, everybody, let's talk about this cookbook and this recipe. It'll be quick. I love this cookbook. It has a lot of really great recipes in it, and I have so many tabs, it's crazy. But this recipe, absolute winner, would make it again 100%. This would be the second time we've made it, so obviously we're gonna make it again. As it's delicious. One of my favorite things is that the Oreo cookies inside of the cake just blend right in. You can taste them. They're not crunchy, they're not mushy. They just blend in and you can taste them and it gives it such a good flavor. And as you saw, we did the frosting a little bit different than the recipe says. The first time we did it, we did it as the recipe said, white frosting with chunks of Oreo on top. This time, as you saw, we put the crumbs of Oreos in with the frosting and then more crumbs on top. Ugh, either way, just, I don't have anything bad to say about this at all. I think I would definitely recommend this cookbook. I would 100% recommend this recipe to anybody. I hope somebody out there tries it because it's absolutely delicious. And I really do love Betty Crocker cookbooks. So I hope you enjoyed this recipe today. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you consider doing so and clicking the bells. And as always, I really do hope you're having a great day.